they are going to need some reasonable, consistent bench production if they're going to continue, you know, to to win games in in this league. But but guys, once they get into the postseason, how much how important is the bench? Well, you you don't know with this group. You you lose one starter. Yeah, you're going to need somebody. So that's the biggest thing. Is right now you got six guys, six and a half, I guess, and, and you better. To me, I think they're going to have to pick up one more guy. Yeah, I, I think this is clear. Missoula, you know, in the preseason, it was, ah, we're going to give Luke Cornett some minutes. You know, that that's kind of the word I got within the organization. And now it's like Luke Cornett never gets on the court when it matters. time for the Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Tangway Along for the Ride podcast right here. And we are sponsored by FanDuel, the official wagering partner of the CLNS Media Networks. Guys, uh, generally we talk about the NBA, but with the passing of the general, uh, Bobby Knight, of course, that is going to be a big part of the show. Uh, Just one of the more controversial, Bob Ryan could probably come up with a better word. Bob, give me... Yeah, I know Jeff covered him in college. Bob, give me give me the word, the one word to describe uh, Bobby Knight besides complicated. Besides complicated. Besides complicated. Besides unrepentant. Besides, um, <laughs> just flawed, flawed, a That's flawed a genius, and he, and, uh, flawed. Um, there's so many aspects uh, of the guy, uh, and and but. He, he 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 the people don't even, don't know about it. i mean i, I only have the public image you know 90% right. of people have formed their opinions based on on what they've seen you know play out or what they've read and i've never been in his company in various circumstances to see or oh, what an interesting maybe that's the word that's interesting man a truly interesting man uh, uh, who had his own very uh, rigid and, un- and and unyielding worldview, uh, you know, and, in which he was the center of a universe and and and, and did no wrong. He didn't yeah. think he did anything wrong ever. Yeah, I mean, listen, he was a lightning rod. That's kind of what he was, right? <laughs> you like either that. you either loved him or you hated him. Right. You know that there was no in between with Bob Knight, but but you respected the hell out of him as a coach, no matter what. Yeah. Like he was that good at what he did, right? He was old school. He would hold kids accountable on the court and in the classroom. Um, classroom, classroom. Thank you. Classroom. Yeah. Thank you for didn't saying cheat. that. And he didn't cheat. He didn't cheat. That was one of his big things, right? I'm right. not paying players. I'm going to get guys in. I'm going to hold them accountable. They're going to get better. They're going to hate me while they're there. They're going to hate me. And, and and I've said this kind of like Jim Calhoun. Calhoun's players hated him when they played for him. And then when they left, they understood what he did to make them better people some, and better players. Some of them. Not yeah. all of them. And and one's Correct. superior right. talent. Yes. You know, and the, the example I I that's I always cite, and I, I, I've written about it. it. It should be online today, I today, which is uh, Thursday, and yeah. it will be in the Globe print on Friday morning. Uh, but uh, Quinn Buckner, oh, yeah, and he loved Quinn Buckner, and Quinn Buckner loved him. Yeah. But Quinn Buckner is an extra, you know, a high, high, high class human being and, and a very smart person. Uh, I'm telling you, at the end of his tenure in Indiana, we would see these guys in the tournament. And and it also in Texas Tech. And when the season was over and they had lost, it was thank God it's over. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. It, it, they were worn out and yeah. and didn't need any. It wasn't oh gee we can't play any more games. It's oh God thank God it's over. No, it it it's it's not that simple that they all loved them. Uh, the the better players may have loved them, but uh, uh, it, it the the he had one gear and one plan and no plan B. Right. And and in the end, it was counterproductive. I mean, motion, yeah, yeah. motion offense, right, Bob? Motion offense, yep. man-to-man defense. He was never gonna deviate. No, no. And uh, but 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 he's. I I had a on and off, thirty-two year relationship. Uh, you know, uh, from 
uh, uh, with him. And uh, it, it started off with him yelling at me in the tunnel before the 1976 championship game against, against Michigan. And it ended with him jousting and having fun and, 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 and uh, at a press conference in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, when he was coaching Texas Tech, you know, going to play BC. And, and it was funny. And it's in, it's all in my book, boys. It's all in there. My chapter on Bob Knight, it's all in there. I and, remember. And I got to tell you one story, though, about the, the good side that people should know. It's, it's a fascinating story. In 1994, BC is going to play Indiana in the in round of 16 in Miami in the East Regional. And I called him up to get a preview story about maybe say on when Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, they were going to, the game was on Friday. And so they were still at home. So it was, it was Monday. It was early in the week. I called him up and we, we and in the course of the conversation, he said, what's going on with O'Brien at BC? And this is when Jimmy O'Brien was in a battle to get a new contract with the Chet Gladchuk, who was then the athletic director at BC. And I said, he's having trouble with, Check Gladchuk, you can't get his guy. He said, all right, here's what you do. He said, you ask me a question on Thursday. You go on a press conference. I said, yes. He said, you ask me a question about BC. I will take it from there. So we get there on Thursday. I don't know exactly what I did. Some innocuous question about BC. Off he goes. He said, I gotta, I'm going to quote it, okay? Because it's got to be quoted, okay? And and I got my book here. Hold it. And Okay. Okay. Here's what he said. A lot of people around the country ask me who would be a good candidate to coach their team and who they should talk to. And if I was going to hire a coach today, Jimmy O'Brien is the guy I'd want to talk to. I mean, here's a guy who went one in 15 with these kids as freshmen in the Big East, and he works with them and he keeps them going, hoping one day will be your day. And that day is here for Boston College. Now that's a yeah. minchy thing to do. That's yeah. a fantastic thing for him to do. And that was when he was capable of good yeah. things, works like that. His his, his uh, taking in of Landon Turner after he was paralyzed to, uh, from the accident uh, is famous. And you can look that up and, and what he did for Landon Turner. Yeah, he did. But boy, he, he could, there was a, there were other, and I, I, I can cite other, I had other good circumstances with him, but, but uh, there was a, a, a an cantankerous, cantankerous uh, uh, you know, arrogant, condescending, uh, and and side of him that that manifested itself far too often. And, and then there was all this juvenile behavior, throwing at a chair, and you know, the the the, and then the choking of Neil Reed, which he denied, but which they have video to show that he did right. put his hands on it, grabbing a student's arm, you know, he well, brought a whip. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember the initial thing that people became aware of was the 1975 76 season, his, his undefeated season, you know, uh, that uh, he grabbed, you know, they're winning the game by 25 points or so, but he's upset about something that, that Jim Wisman did. And he grabs Jim Wisman by the shirt and he's yelling at him and win the game. And I was one of the many people who wrote a column about it. And I did resort to the, the cliche of would you want your son to play for Bob Knight? Okay. Yeah. So here's what happened. We get to the final four and we get to the champ night of the championship game in Philadelphia in the spectrum. And Kurt Gowdy says to me, and we were, I knew I had a, you know, a casual relationship with Kurt Gowdy. And he says to me, Hey, let's take a walk. I don't know if you remember the spectrum, Jeff and, and, and Gary, but you could walk all the way around the building underneath. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, it was it was a there was a walk pathway all the way around the building. So Kurt, Chet and I are walking and and we run it tonight. And he says, Bob, hey Chet, Bob, you, you know, you know Bobby Ryan, Bobby, you know, you know Bobby Ryan. And he goes, oh, some people ought to, yeah, you know, he starts growling and he goes, Yeah, what uh, writing things they don't know anything about, and blah, blah, blah. And he's screaming and yelling. And and as he had seen, he knew he knew I was one of those people who had written that column. And uh, that was that was my first serious encounter. The, the, now, the, you know, the, the, hello, okay, this is just an hour and a half before the championship game. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but That's he liked funny. that. He thrived. He did. And, and I know Pat, his son, well. 
and Pat, he thrived on some of those. He needed some of that. <laughs> he didn't want to be liked by everybody. He, he, in, in fact, I think he thrived on people hating him. Um, and he was going to do it his way. I'll give you. So I, I didn't know him super well, obviously, because, uh, you know, when I came in, Texas Tech wasn't great. So the the first uh, the first deal I ever had dealing I had with him was I was there for the first uh, time at Texas Tech. I went to Lubbock when he was going to break the record. Now, he mm-hmm. didn't end up breaking the record. It was right before, I think, Christmas. So I didn't stick around. It was either before Christmas or New Year's. <laughs> so I tried once and then I was like, all right, my wife's going to kill me if I don't get back home. So I didn't stay for the the actual record breaker. But, you know, at this point, I've interviewed pretty much everybody in my career. You know, a lot of big enough people. I'm not intimidated. Generally, I'm not intimidated by anybody in a press conference setting. You know, I dealt with Calhoun and and some of these other guys who will go at you, players, whatnot. And and I go in the press conference postgame, and I'm shaking. I'm shaking because I know, like, if I ask the wrong question, this guy's going to absolutely bite my head off. And even if I ask the right one, he might bite my head off. You know, it's interesting that people don't re- re- refer to very often, but you, I know you'll agree to this. He's a big guy. He was physically intimidating, oh, and yeah. that was part of the package, and he knew it. Bob Knight was 6'4". Yep. Now, remember Bob Knight, you know, I mean, guys, people don't know. He was the sixth man on the Ohio State team that won the NCAA in 1960. Played, played, played with Played with Havlicek. Havlicek and Jerry Lucas. He was the sixth man. Uh, 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 but he was a basketball player. And, and he was a big guy. He looked like a linebacker at the time. Frankly, he was a – and he and he knew how to use that as an, in, as an intimidator, people. I have no question about it. It's like Frank Martin. Frank Martin knows yeah, uh, you, yes. that uh, he's a big guy with these right. broad shoulders, and he scares the bleep out of people. Bobby Knight could physically scare the bleep out of some some people. Not everybody, maybe, but some people. So, uh, yeah, it, it was just there's so many. I got you know the, the, there were a million there were a million stories, but uh, uh, all right, you're Mount Rushmore. You're Mount Rushmore, uh, Bob. Oh yeah, of college basketball coaches has to include Wooden, has to include Knight, has to include K. Right, those are three oh, you have indeed. to have on it. Indeed, yeah. and, I'll stop right there. Yeah, I'll, and, 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 there, that's and, a, I'll, I'll go to bed on that one. Of four, Krzyzewski played for Knight and Army. Yeah, he and then they did. didn't end well. Like they, you know, I wonder if Coach K has any regrets. Oh, um, no. I don't. I don't know if if anything happened in the last few months or year, uh, but I know they had a falling out years ago, and I don't. I this don't public know statement. Is it's one hundred percent? You know, ex, you know, enthusiasm. I, I, I he's my mentor. Yeah. I saw it this morning. In my because we were looking for that. You're looking for that because you were interested. We know the background that they they didn't, oh, the, uh, they didn't he, get along for years. Well, he got angry with 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 Coach K after John Feinstein's book. Yep. Because uh, he hated the book, the, the, the season on the brink, and. And that uh, Coach K is the one who recommended that was the Feinstein two night, you know. Oh, John spent the whole season, you oh, know, sure. living with them, living with them to write that book. Which, which is amazing of, that Bob Knight would be okay with that, isn't it? I was shocked. Well, I agree. Well, and I, I maybe he thought he could he could manipulate Feinstein, but of course he didn't. And of course it was the launching of John Feinstein's and changed his whole life. You know, oh, career. It changed and, his career. And it's one of the handful of of must read sports books of our lifetime. I want to read it again, yeah. actually. I it's, might read it again. Yeah, I mean it's uh, but it's a lot of stuff in there. Like I'm putting a tampon in Daryl Thomas's locker, and yeah. you know yeah. the stuff like that. Bob wasn't happy to have people know things like that, but uh, you know, um, but anyway. Um, yeah. So, but he was angry with with Coach K at that point, and then I think they they got back. Well, it appears Coach K is saying all the appropriately no sure, now. Sure, of course, sure, you know, natural, natural. You know, so you're gonna uh, yeah. It he was sui generis. There was nobody quite like him ever, obviously, and and, and with the pirate the entire package. And you're gonna hear a lot of different stories, and and there are so many aspects. Um, you know the the. the I people- once sat. Hey, Bob. I once sat. Uh, after after a game, at Madison Square Garden, me, Billis, Bob Knight, and and I can't remember the fourth person went over to a deli. It had to be like one in the morning, and I sat across him. He didn't know me at the time at all. I I was, I was young, 
uh, breaking in still. Literally sat across him. Do you know how many words he said to me the entire meal for 90 minutes? Zero. 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 I tried to talk to him a couple times. Nothing. Zero. There's so many. I I, I don't. There's going to be a lot. It's written, you know, I, I, and I had a column. A column is like a thousand words to it. So you couldn't begin to scratch the surface of all the stuff. You know, I do recommend my book. However, I have a chapter on Bob Knight. And the right. public, I, I unloaded everything that I could in there. You know, all the stories that I had and, and all this stuff. And uh, I, I and feel bad for his family. Guys, I feel bad for his family because the last like three years or so, um, yeah, he, yeah. Had, he had dementia. Right, right, and, right. You know, I talked to Pat a lot about this. And, you know, when, when he went back to Bloomington two right. and a half, whatever it was years ago, for the first time, Pat was really worried because, again, he wasn't remembering much at all at that point. He didn't know how he'd be. And he, he told me, he said, the, the switch just flipped for him <laughs> when he walked into Assembly Hall and the fans and he saw all his former players. He said it was like. It flipped yeah. back. Great. And uh, yeah, just, you know, watch that. If, if you're like, watch that again, because that was a very, very cool moment for a yeah. lot of the old time Indiana fans too, who were in that building. You could see them, you know, starting to cry. And, and I'm sure they'll cry again, whatever yeah. they're going to have for Bob Knight here oh. in the next week in Bloomington. Um, it, it's going to be special for a lot of those fans who grew up with that era of Indiana basketball. One of the most fascinating uh, aspects uh, of, of, you know, we got, you know, was his relationship with Bill Parcells. Uh, they were very, very close. Right. And it all began at Army when they were, he was, he was the 24, 25 year old coach of the basketball team. And Bill Parcells was a young assistant of the football team. They were both bachelors. They lived near each other and they hung out when day was over. They hung out with each other and they, then he hit it off. They, you can imagine, you can see how. The, totally. Uh, Here's my theory on that. Why they uh, and is that each of them uh, uh, knew enough about the other guy's sport to act as a sounding board, but never to pretend he knew as much or more. Right. See, interesting. Never. Yeah. Parcells is um, his his uh, mentor in high school was not his football coach. It was a guy named Mickey, I forget the last name, but was his basketball coach. Right. And, and and Parcells was a fan of all sports. Knight, similarly, was a fan of all sports. And uh, yeah, and But th that was an interesting friendship. And uh, But they really, uh, they, at the peak of both their popularity, you know, it, it was it was interesting. Another guy uh, that Knight uh, went fishing in Alaska with, in Russia, was Ted Williams. Wow. But Knight was an outdoors guy, you know. Yeah, One reason wow. he loved he loved going yeah he was out fishing he was a, hunting he was a, he was a hunting and yeah. fishing guy yes. and uh, he played golf too but but he was, and of course Ted is you know the notoriously fam famous fisherman and uh, but they went fishing together in in, in Russia in trout fishing and endless he was friend of Larusa naturally you know that you can see that oh, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean it it, it 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 was fascinating and I could tell you. Oh, oh, it, it's, I mean, I, we don't even have time, but, it, it, you know, it, but he, believe me, it, 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 it was not all bad. It was not all good, but you have, you have to acknowledge, don't let anybody pretend that he didn't, uh, that, that the bad wasn't a problem in his life. And, and right. It was a life. He lived a life. The only oh, story uh, I could, the, the only story I can add to this is remember Michael Bradley, who was recruited out of Worcester, went to Kentucky. Oh, certainly. Yeah. I, cause I was working in Worcester at the time and I remember, uh, Bobby Knight called Michael Bradley. And I don't think, I don't know if that would have been a good fit. Uh, but um, I think Michael went to the right schools. But I, I also remember Bill Parcells called Michael on behalf of Bobby Knight. Really? Huh? Well, that, that, that so he, he's like, I got a call from not only Bobby Knight, then I got a call from Parcells too. Right? All right. I, we, we can. You know, I'll just well, the one thing that I, I just before as we wrap this up, there's just I, I want to there's two things that I want to know. Number one, from Jeff's perspective, how tough was it being his son? Mm -hmm. Brutal, brutal. I mean, you went, when I talked to Pat about it, br absolutely brutal. You know, and Pat was <laughs> listen, Pat will fully admit he was not the uh, model son. He, he would tell me, how about this? And I, I think he'd be fine with it, saying it now. But 
you know, he would go to the bars and uh, he'd get into fights all the time and, and be belligerent and whatever. And the, the cops would pull him out like the back door. They would try to protect him. Right. And I said, I'm like, I'm like, but your dad, like, what did he do when he found this stuff out? And he would say, no, no, my dad never knew. He's like, my mom knew. My dad, they'd never tell him. He never knew any of this stuff. And it was going on like weekly, weekly with Pat Knight. So Pat Knight, Bob kicked him off the team. He suspended him. He kicked him off the team. And then he had to earn his way back in on the team. He was, that, that was the one thing. He was the same. Exactly the same with Pat Knight as right. he was with everybody else. And Pat said, you know, obviously it was different once he finished playing with him. If you want to really see something emotional with, with Bob, it was Pat senior night. Right. When he right. said, listen, I, I love Woodson. I love Alan Henry. Like all these guys, people think my favorite players were, were those guys. He said, my, my favorite player was Patrick Knight. And then he walked off the court and literally you could see a tear or two start to come down his face and he wanted to get the hell in that tunnel before anybody could actually see him cry. Sure. Wow. I want, yeah. Before we go, I want to uh, dispel any thoughts that any Boston oriented fan would have about, uh, he did he have his relationship with bird when Larry bird went to Indiana, right? His relationship with Larry bird when he went to Indiana was nil. Uh, it, Larry bird left Indiana because of he was socially uncomfortable and and felt totally overwhelmed by by the, this urban life and and the, the wealth of this other students and the, everything he completely and the size uh, right and element. the size of the school and, yeah. right and Larry Bird went to went there he told me with seventy five dollars and one pair of pants that was supposed to last him until he come home for <laughs> Christmas seriously okay and 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 then he wasn't treated well by Kent Benson and the players for, with for scrimmages and all that he well. How long did he last, Bob? How a month. He, he lasted a month, a month. A month. And and Bob Knight told me, how, this is surprising to some people. He didn't have many regrets. He regretted that he didn't do more, didn't and something to keep Bird. Really? That he didn't recognize what was going on, and he could have used them. Here's the thing: that year they lost in the t- tournament to Kentucky by two points on a night when when. Scott uh, May uh, was was had was out not playing due to a broken wrist, and he could have used one more very useful body that year. Yep. They only lost Thanks. one game in two years, and then the next year they went undefeated. And but anyway, he did. Exp- I, I was like blown away that he would uh, w- willing to admit that I, I should have done something. I should have saved Larry Bird. So that let, let the record show that. <laughs> Little humility. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action of NFL. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including you got spreads. You get your player props, you got over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, so we wrap up Bobby Knight. Uh, two things we do want to get to. Um, uh, we're going to get to Harden in L.A., but we have to talk about the Celtics and oh the fact that I don't know if they're going to lose at this time. They're <laughs> undefeated in this show. Uh, they put up All right, Gary. Settle down, Gary. Settle down. Uh, uh, they 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 have um, uh, they scored 155 points against Indiana, yeah. and which is the second highest total for a Celtic team, I believe. It certainly is. Bob, go ahead. What are you thinking of this crew, man? Um, obviously, this is almost fixed. It, it's too good to be true, you know. The idea so far with the with the starters and 155 points is mind blowing. Obviously, that uh, and and. Uh, uh, the the thing that we're I want to get to it. What, what after the first two games, I was uh, ambivalent because oh, it's great to win, but the bench thing was terrifying me. They 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 had they got twelve points off the bench in the first game and eight points off the bench in the second game. I said you can't live like this. Period. I don't care. I mean, you can't. It can't go on. Got a little better in the third game. The third game, um, they got twenty six bench points, and of course last night when the bench played the whole fourth quarter. And and Hauser and and Pritchard found their range 
I'm, and uh, I know what Jeff's going to say. They didn't do it against the, the starters and right. uh, when it mattered and under pressure. And he's right. Uh, but they went up with 60, nine, 63 points off the bench. Point, But they are going to need some reasonable, consistent bench production if they're going to continue you know, to, to win games in, in this league. But, but guys, once they get into the postseason, how much – how important is the bench? Well, you you don't know with this group. You, you lose one starter, yeah. You're gonna need somebody. So that's the biggest thing. Is right now you got six guys, six and a half, I guess. And, and you better to me. I think they're gonna have to pick up one more guy. Yeah, I, I think this is clear, Missoula. You know, in the preseason, it was, ah, we're going to give Luke Cornett some minutes. You know, that that's kind of the word I got within the organization. And now it's like Luke Cornett never gets on the court when it matters. So you got really six, Pritchard is seven. I think you're going to need one more guy, and I think they're going to have to trade uh, for that one more guy because they're going to understand. Brad Stevens is going to see how close this thing is for them. Oh, yeah, this is it. We this already know it. it. Right, we you already see go. it. I mean, oh, d- 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 I mean, as far as I'm concerned, mortgage is- the picks, Absolutely. whatever you got to do God. win a title this year, yes. because it, it has set up, right? Like what team golden States, not what they were. The Lakers aren't what they were. We're not like, yeah, you're scared of Jokic and Denver, but you're not terrified of them. Now you got a better overall top six than they do. Milwaukee. Well, yeah. Milwaukee. Like they, they, they could beat you, but, but you easily. Could or probably should beat them. them. Oh, this is the year. You got to go, man. This is, uh, you know, this is so analogous to 07, 08. No doubt. It's totally analogous. Now, the difference is, obviously, you know, 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 those guys were actually older, much older. And that's what their urgency wasn't. But they believe people thought, though, when they got a three-year window, well, they actually did. They could have won three if they didn't gotten injuries in 09 and 10. But this is very analogous. And and Doc is stressed. I've talked to Doc about this lately. And and, and he says, absolutely, we made it clear that that this is – we've gone – we, this year, Matt, this is the year that we're not thinking about. But open. you can't wear out this the top six. I understand, you know, some are young, some aren't so young, but in, in some are injury prone. Porzingis, we know. You can't wear them out. Missoula's got to be smart about this this year. And to me, it's take a loss here and there if you have to. Yeah, but yeah. make sure, like Tatum's playing, I mean, now after last night, he only played 27 minutes, yeah. but the first couple nights he played. I mean, his numbers, by the way, the first four games, talk about he's he's been the most efficient he's ever been. Yes. To start averaging 30 points a game, nine boards, uh, four assists, but he's shooting 56% from the field, 41% from three, 80 from the line. You know, like, like honestly, this is what I envision out of Jason Tatum, and he's going to be more efficient now. Why? Because he's got Porzingis, because he's got Porzingis to help open up the floor. They got to worry about him. So that gives Tatum more space. And then you got two guys at the, the guard spot that know how to move the ball. No disrespect to Marcus Smart, but come on, man. These guys know how to move the basketball. They know how to get him the ball exactly where he needs it. I still I keep asking myself, why did San Antonio let Derek White go? I, I, I asked it. He was making a lot of money. For his role, remember he was playing like with yeah. Dejounte Murray, but they wanted to really build around Dejounte Murray, and they were like, "This guy's uh, making too much money for what we're we're trying to do." That was that. That's going to look at. That's going to be yes. If he he's a bargain now. He's a bargain. He this is going to be one of the great uh, coups of yes. pickups in the history of the team, on yes. a par with picking up Don Nelson for a dollar, you know, and all that, or a hundred dollars, whatever it was, you know, but uh, no, it, it's fun. I mean, they, they're, they're wetting our appetite here. They're teasing us. With, I mean, a hundred, 155. I mean, it's, it's just uh, uh, astonishing. Uh, now, just for the record, Gar, the record was that famous 173, 139 game in February 28, 1959, uh, when uh, Russell didn't play <laughs> and uh, he, he didn't play. And uh, Kuzi got a then record 28 assists that day oh, unbelievable. and uh they and the funny thing about it is it was it was a during school vacation week and in the morning they had uh, a clinic 
they did a clinic and the emphasis of the clinic at Red Hat was on defense. <laughs> and they went out and got 173 and gave up 139. Uh, that was at that point, the highest scoring game in NBA history uh, it has since been eclipsed in total points. But uh, anyway, Oh, this is teasing, but it's, it's a, uh, I, I, last night I was, I had to write, I was writing night, you know, suddenly and, and by the time I got done and I turned on the TV, they were up by 37 <laughs> and, and, oh, uh, boy, on their way to being up by 50. But uh, uh, it's it, it's encouraging as it's exactly. Oh, I got one question for you, Jeff. Uh, is it possible they, they got a little fined in, in Brissette to do what he does? Yes. Uh, that he yes. can help win games? He's already helped win one game for sure. Yeah, I, I like O'Shea. I, I always liked him at Syracuse, to be honest. I thought he was he was kind of that perfect, like, you know, energy, athletic, yeah, hybrid forward. Um, he's perfect for this team. Again, you don't need him to do a whole lot. Nobody's no. paying attention to you. Play hard, defend, be able to 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 switch and defend multiple positions and uh and play with energy. They they need somebody in that spot to provide energy more than anything else, and that's what he can do. That's who's been giving him in the in the Dixville notch early season returns, but you know, that's 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 got my attention. Pritchard in him. Pritchard and him have to bring energy, and they do. And has Holiday found his groove yet? No, not yet. Oh, no, exactly. Take, so can you imagine? Take a month. It's well, going to take a month for Drake. Right. Yeah, yeah well, that's, when he does. Oh God, that's good to know. No, it, yes. it's, it's very good to know. No, you got to so, protect Horford. The one, the two guys you got to protect are Horford and Porzingis, right this year. And right. to me, that's why you need one more big body. Uh, by the all-star break like a veteran who can give you 15 18 minutes another guy so that those two can take nights off and you don't have to worry right it's as long as it's not dwight howard uh, it will not be dwight howard <laughs> no he's in china right i believe i don't even know if he's playing anymore he's in china search. hey bob do a google search for dwight howard that name and, came uh, up but at one point i almost wretched and, uh, you're going to find a yeah a story that you're going to be a little bit surprised <laughs> about. Um, okay. All right. Well, now, no, I'm go I'm Googling him right now. Maybe no. I don't want to. I don't know. No, you want to do that one more off the air. I think he's in okay, China. I got <laughs> I understand. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Hey, now that it's summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for sunny, active days. Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track reaching your goals. Too busy with summer plants to cook, though? Well, make sure you remain on course and eating well. With Factor, you can skip the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up, too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back outside and soak up this warm weather. Elevate eating at home with our new upscale Surf and Turf. It's Surf and Surf meal options like roasted garlic filet mignon and shrimp and Cajun spiced shrimp and salmon. And also budget-wise, it's very good too. Cut back on takeout, get Factor instead. Factor is not only cheaper than takeout, but the meals are ready faster than restaurant delivery in just two minutes. So head to factormeals.com slash scribe50 and use your code scribe50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code scribe50 at factormeals.com slash scribe50 to get 50% off your first box. Uh, so Harden has found a new home. This yeah. drama is finally over. Jeff, I'll start with you on this as he goes to the Clippers. Um, I pity Lawrence Frank. Uh, uh, and I and I feel bad for Kawhi Leonard, to be honest, and Paul George, because you know, they, listen, at least Kawhi's won a title. Um, you know, Paul George hasn't. You know, they went out back home, Russell Westbrook there. It's like Team LA now, and now they bring Harden back home. All these guys are from the the, the greater Los Angeles area, and uh, they're back together. But man, I, I just I just have a hard time with this. You know, and I like Lawrence Frank a lot, and I understand like he's fighting for his job there and and to continue to 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 run that organization. But man, how many how many chances are we going to give this knucklehead? I know, I like, know. How many chances are we going to give him? Like enough? Like blackball him, blackball him from the league. He's a quitter. 
he is a a multiple quitter on his teammates and and franchises. Why do we keep giving him opportunity? Well, why? Because Lawrence Frank thinks that he could be the missing piece. And he is talented. When he wants to be, he's a hell of a player. The problem is, again, like he's just – He's a he's a quitter, and honestly, he'll quit on the Clippers at some point. He'll the whole quit package on package. It comes under the heading of "Be careful what you wish for, guys." Yeah, so, yeah and, and we always and the rest of the league Shame. can see it. I, 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 it's he's not. I, I, I'm tired of obviously tired of James Harden, and but just technically, you know, the uh, is he going to be a, a mesh with, with them? I, I, I'm not, I don't see it. What about the other side, Jeff? What about the what Philly got some. You know, I don't know. I, I like Covington to, as a for what he is. For example. It's about the picks. It's just about the it's picks. Not, oh, I don't understand that. That's yeah. all that is to get right. as many first round picks. And they did a good job. I actually oh, think more got more, more than I thought he'd get. Yeah, but they here's got- the problem. Unless you flip those picks quickly, you could sit, you could kiss Joel and be goodbye. <laughs> like it's just a matter of when, right? It's a matter of when does his agent tell Joel. All right, now's the time. Here's what we're going to do. Just like Rich Paul did with Anthony Davis years ago. Anthony Davis is the best kid in the world. But, again, at some point, Rich Paul said, you know what? It's not going to work here in New Orleans. Here's right, what we're going to do. The same thing is going to happen with Joel and his agent at some point. Joel's awesome. Like, I love him. Love him. I've known him for since he was a freshman at Kansas. And – uh but but if I'm Joel's agent, I'm telling him, hey, we're requesting a trade. At the break here, if if we're not, if they don't make another move to get you another dude, you need a third guy here to go with Maxi. And if they can get a third guy, like they could be in business. Oh, yeah, they could. Yeah. If it's the right third guy, because Maxi, I actually never thought I'd say this, but I think he could be a number two guy now. Oh, I I, I definitely think he can. I know you did. You yeah, did a, a while ago. I didn't see that from him. I didn't see it. Like I'm, I'm surprised. I'm saying that, but I'm, I'm bought in. So he could be a number two guy and a fringe all star, but they need a, a another dude out of from these picks, and they need him quickly, or else Joel's going to be gone. I'll tell you, there's no lack of people who would volunteer to go drive from Philadelphia to New York to Philadelphia to pick him up and bring him oh. back, to, bring him back. The New York paper, you know, the post is the all, missing all, piece there. They're always all over it, you know. Right. With the, and the, think like, about him in New York. Like, honestly, he could <laughs> handle New York, first of all. He could handle the New York media, no problem. Uh, you put him with Brunson, I'd give up the whole team other than Brunson. Mm. Give up everybody. Everybody <laughs> in that team's gone. Well, well, I mean, obviously you can't. You need something in return. But but what I'm saying is, every who do you right. want? Randall, Barrett? Mitchell Robinson, take them all. We just want Brunson and Embiid, and we'll build around those two. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, the Harden thing, I'm glad it's over. But I'm, oh, I'm glad he's on the West Coast, so we yes. don't have to see him. We don't have to see him as much. <laughs> Gentlemen, always a pleasure. Uh, we will talk again next week right here. And we are sponsored by FanDuel, the official wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Uh, score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Jeff Goodman, Bob Bryan, we'll talk to you soon.